In this video, I'm going to walk you through my exact process to write content that ranks high on Google. I have used this process for dozens of keywords. I use it on my clients SEO campaigns. I am so excited to share my process with you today. Once you've determined the keyword that you want to rank for, what you're going to do is start with research. This is so important, but so often missed. Type your target keyword into Google and actually analyze the top ranking posts. I'm just going to start by opening these and tell you my thoughts as I open them and how I'm going to make my posts stand out. So very first off, we have HubSpot. They are very authoritative website. They're only listing 15 examples. That's not that many. I plan to list a lot more than this. Not only that, I have to scroll a little bit far down to even see the websites. And what I'm seeing is just a landing page and a link. I think it would be so much nicer if I could actually see the full page because you're just seeing the top section and that really isn't much. I just see that this is a listicle format, no ads or annoying pop-ups. Uh, overall, a good post it has a link to the author, the last updated date. Overall, good stuff. Moving on to Forbes. Right Right off the bat, they have a cheesy stock photo. They can get away with it. They're Forbes. They've got an advertisement and then they got some websites, which is kind of interesting to me that for a small business web design, they're using companies like Tesla and Chanel and an expensive chocolate company. Like to me, these aren't small business examples. The next step is to create an SEO content brief. This is also so, so important. Do not skip it. I know a lot of times people think creating this will just take more time. It ends up saving you so much more time and your content comes out so much better. So I have an entire video on this process that I'll make sure to link below for you. If you are able to use a tool like Surfer or Rankability, I highly recommend that. I will be using Surfer for this, but if that's not an option for you at this time, I highly recommend. Check out my process on how to do this for free. It works just the same. All right, so I'm over here logged into Surfer creating a content editor that is going to guide my writing for small business web design inspiration. So the content editor is ready and now I need to create an outline. Don't just throw these keywords into ChatGPT and have it start writing. You wanna start with an outline. So what I'm going to do, pull over my ChatGPT editor and saying I'm writing a blog post titled Small Business Web Design Inspiration and Best Practices for 2025. Please create an outline for it. Please make sure to hit a target word count of about 3000 words. I will provide the 35 examples. And then I'm just copying this keyword list from Surfer and then it's going to give me an outline. Outline. So then just by taking this outline over here, let's just bring it on over, put it into Surfer. And then what I'm going to do is say, let's give my blog post a title. All right, cool. So I've got my heading. So now I'm basically just going to refeed my content outline to ChatGPT to create a first draft. Emphasize first draft. This is just a first draft and we are just getting started. So I've already done that. Let me pause the video and pull it, pull it up. All right. So I've went back and forth with ChatGPT and I have my examples. Now there's a few things that I want to kind of touch on. So focus keyword placement is important. I always, regardless of what surfer or any tool says, put my focus keyword in the following places. In the H1, in the first H2, which is the first sec subheading, you can use a variation here if you want, but I generally just go exact focus keyword in the first sentence. So for example, looking for small business web design inspiration per sentence, and then in a couple of the subheadings, but it really just depends. And then sometimes I'll even put it in the last sentence, but also the last sentence can be hit or miss, but always, always first H1, first, well, only H1, H2, and first sentence must. Of course, the URL in the meta description, we haven't gotten there yet. So that's the first thing. The next thing is I put a placeholder for where I'm going to actually bring in my images. I'll be getting to that at a later point in the video, but um, you know, I have that there. And then going through to make sure that my headings are correctly organized. See how this is saying it's an H1 tag and this is an H2. This is so important. This should not be an H4. It should always be H1 to H2 to H3. An H2 can either go, an H2 can only go to another H2 or or an H3. You want to make it logical. So never skip numbers. You know, just think of it that way. <laughs> it's kind of like a table of content. Um, so making sure that all of those are correct. One other thing that I want to say about Surfer, these are the guidelines that you want to target, but remember they're just guidelines. So I always try and hit the word count and the top section of keywords. So hitting on these keywords are going to have more of an impact than hitting on these down here. So you don't want to keyword stuff. You want to make sure that you're touching on these topics appropriately, but don't keyword stuff just for the sake of hitting a certain number. It's much more better to sound natural and hitting on these, you know, within a reasonable range. It kind of becomes practice, but I always, you know, try and get pretty close to the targets, but might not hit them exactly because I don't want my content to sound totally robotic. All right, so now it's time to get ourselves over into WordPress and optimize over there. If you're not using WordPress, a lot of these things are going to be very similar. Some of the settings might just be in different places. So I trust that you got this and can figure it out. But if you have any questions, just leave them below. So let's jump in. All right, so I've got my content over in WordPress and now I'm going to really start to spice it up a lot and make it my own and make it value packed. Talking you through some of my thought processes. Once I get down to best practices for small business web design, 
lines, this tells me that somebody is thinking about planning their website. And luckily I have a website planning guide that I'm going to embed. So it's just a Flowdesk form that I have and I'm just gonna grab the inline code and then just format it right in my blog post. So, okay, so I don't know if you can preview this. I might not preview, but it's my website planning guide. It'll look like that once it's published. And then the next thing I'm thinking is, ooh, what about at the bottom, I can have a link related 30 things to consider when you're planning your website. This is a blog post that I have, so it makes perfect sense to link it right here. And then I know when I get to the bottom, one thing I definitely wanna have is a call to action to work with me. So luckily I have these little graphics in my media library that I can just very simply pull in. All right, cool. So now I've got my image, my call to action at the bottom. I always like to include this. So that's just a couple examples of how you can really make this your own. I'm probably gonna go through and do this more, but hopefully you get the idea. I've included a free resource, a link to another blog post, and a call to action to book my services. Now what I'm gonna do is start to plug in my images over here. So I have my images in Canva right in this file, download them all, and I'm actually gonna change them to JPEGs. I don't want them to be too big for my website. So now what I'm going to do is implement the two column approach by hitting this little plus icon, columns, and then two. What I want to do is grab this section and I don't want to stack it on mobile. On mobile, I actually want it to be the two columns as well. All right, so as you can see, I have these JPEGs and these are an okay size. I'm fine with uploading these to my website at that size. Probably should make it a little smaller. Maybe that's something I'll go back and do later. What I cannot do is I cannot upload images named one, two, three. This means nothing to Google. I need to actually have an intentional name. So I'm going to name them and then I'm going to come back. All right, so I just named all of these. And to be honest, they might be slightly overkill in terms of keyword stuffing because I'm using the same one to prefix prefix them all. Proceed with caution on that. I'm going to do it. You may not want to. It is a little bit much, but now I'm going to just start pulling in my images. So I'm going to just drag and drop it right into the block. And then what I can do, one little easy thing, is I can just duplicate. I want to have you stay here and watch through all of this, so I'll probably just do, do this soon. All right, so next thing that we also want to do is make sure to set our categories. Not huge in terms of SEO, but I just, I always like to do it. So I'm going to set this for the SEO category. The next thing we want to do is make sure our text is skimmable. So what I'm going to use, because I don't have as many images for down below, I want all my images to be front and center, is I'm actually going to use an accordion block. I'm going to use this one and I'm not actually going to just make it like a FAQ. This is just going to make it more skimmable and easy to read and actually get through the content. So I'm going to do this and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and used these little accordions, so I am good there. The next thing I want to do is make sure I set a featured image. So now that I have my uh, designs pull in, I'm just going to pull in one that I like for this. It's not, it doesn't have to be anything too crazy. Sometimes you can create a custom image if you want to go in Canva, create a 500 by 500 graphic. I do that a lot, but I think this one's going to be perfectly fine. Now it's time to come and optimize Yoast SEO. I have a separate video on this, but it is so important that you do this. So um, you're going to set your focus keyword. I'm going to just do small business web design inspiration and honestly um, for the title I like to grab it and then so see how it says like dash Samantha digital right there it's because of these variables I just like to set that on my by myself um, and so it fits all right there we are good to go then small business web design inspo what I usually do is I just copy the beginning part probably not the best practice I will say you can create a custom one but I am going to give it a shot and then I generally just Okay, cool, got Yoast. Oh, that's what I like to do, and I've started doing this kind of recently at the bottom of my blog post. Basically, you'll just say looking more for more in XYZ category. Then what you'll do is you'll go to the category for the blog posts and then link them manually. So um, we've got this one, which I just had the featured image, but then I've also got these other two blog posts. So what I'm going to do is restaurant and web design inspo. All right. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is clean this up using Grammarly. So I have Grammarly just built into Chrome. So here I'll go through and analyze and see, look for any spelling mistakes that need to be reworded. Just be careful when you do this. If you are using a tool like Surfer, then it may change some of the keywords and adjust your score. Not something to be hugely concerned about, but it is something to keep in mind. I'm looking at this blog post and aside from the images up here, I feel like there's not a lot of images. So what I'm going to do is add in some of my brand photos to really make this as unique as possible and just a quick insight into how I stay organized in Canva I have an entire brand photos uh, folder that I can then just pull in images 
as I would like. So let's see. Um, all right, so that should do. I'm gonna pull those into my website now and I'm gonna just download them as a JPEG. All right, so the way I like to name images that like aren't for that big like set that I had up there for the, the web designs is I actually just like to take the headings themselves and then name them that way. And I'm gonna just bring it right in here. For the first image, it is good to make it the focus keyword. So that actually works out perfectly. So I almost forgot that. Cool, I think this is looking pretty good. Now I just like to double check using the detail SEO extension. Again, I have a separate video on that. Um, making sure that my target keywords in the title, description, and the URL, and then making sure that my heading structure is okay which it is. Okay, I actually lied. One thing I noticed that is not okay that we do need to fix is I don't have my H3 headings in here. So they got lost in the mix. So we're gonna just add them back really quick. So over in my accordion, I have to come over to question and set the question tag to be an H3. Okay, so I fixed it. So now here, see how we're seeing the H3s? That's really good. All right, so the next step that I always like to do before submitting and indexing is I always just paste everything back in Surfer to make sure something didn't get lost. All right, so now very importantly, we wanna make sure that we do not forget to request indexing by Google. So we do this via Google Search Console. All we do is type the URL right up here and click request indexing. This is being tested right now. I'm pretty sure it'll just say like in progress. So make sure you do this. Do not wait for Google to get around to it. Sometimes it can take long, why wait? Let's see. Okay, so there we go. All right, indexing has been requested for this blog post. We are good. Now, the one of the last steps I like to do is update my other blog post to refer back to this new one that I published because building internal link coverage is going to be so, so important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open these two blog posts and come down to the bottom of mine and see how I added this section looking for more web design inspiration, check out these. I'm actually just gonna add this to both of these posts so that now I have links between relevant blog posts. And that is always, always, always a good thing. Oof, so I know that was a lot. Thank you so much for hanging with me through to the end. The very last thing that we wanna do is start building backlinks to this piece of content. This will absolutely help move it up the ranks more quickly. If you wanna see more content on backlinks, make sure you leave a comment below and check out the existing resources that I have in the caption. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. I'll see you soon.